Okay, so uh, you can go ahead and read this problem yourself. Go ahead and pause it and, uh, and read through it. But basically, it's uh, telling us to treat a plane like a simple harmonic motion. Uh, it's given us an amplitude of 30 meters and a maximum acceleration of 1.8 g, which just means 1.8 times 9.8 meters per second squared, which I have there written at the bottom of my stuff on the left. You can also see that I went ahead and wrote down uh, the equations for this, uh, which you can also just get if you're good at calculus and doing derivatives by starting with that x of t and just taking two time derivatives and not forgetting to do chain rule there. Okay? So if we look at this, they tell us that's the maximum acceleration. And if we look at our equation for acceleration right here, we see that it's a omega squared times cosine of omega t. And a, the amplitude, and omega, our angular uh, velocity, our angular frequency, is, are actually both constants. So the only thing that can affect whether or not it's a big or small number here is the cosine with the omega t inside of it, so that time. And we know that values for cosine range from uh, negative 1 to 1. And if we only worry about the absolute value of that, that means it's just ranging from 0 to 1. So we're just interested in having a maximum occur whenever cosine of omega t equals 1. Anything else, uh, it's going to be less than the maximum uh, acceleration. So what we can say for part A here is we can say acceleration max is just equal to, and we're going to do the absolute value here of it, is just equal to A omega squared. All right? And then if we remember that omega, right, omega equals 2 pi F, which just equals 2 pi over T, we can say A max equals A times 4 pi squared over T squared. Okay? Just like that. If we solve this for t, we get t equals, and we'll have the square root of 4a pi squared over our max acceleration, all square rooted, just like that. Okay? And at that point, it's just a matter of plugging in some numbers uh, in order to get the period. So this will be 4 times 30 meters times pi squared, right, all over the acceleration max, which was 1.8 times 9.8 meters per second squared, and all of that square rooted. All right, now I'm not going to spend a lot of time here on the video uh, doing this uh, and doing the math out. You can do the math out and uh, Actually, I guess we're going to need it for the next part. But anyway, uh, on some of these, when I don't have to have the answer or it's at the end, I might just let you, uh, it means I just don't have, I'll just let you do uh, any of the calculating. But we can look here and see that meters will cancel with meters. We have a second squared, a one over second squared in the denominator, which just gives us a second squared, which will just give us a second, which is what we want for period. We can square root the four and make it a two pi, and then we'll do square root of 30 over, and then 1.8 times 9.8 is 17.64. That's square rooted, and it'll all be ultimately in seconds. And so if we plug that in, we get 30 divided by that. We want to square root it, and then multiply it by 2 pi, and double check me on that, but I get 8.19 and seconds would be our answer there. So I get about 8.19 seconds right there for that. Uh, after that, you can come across here and do part B. In part B, it asks for the plane's maximum speed. So here we're going to go with the velocity equation. And again, this time it has a sign there. The sign is the thing that's going to affect it. And we want it when the sign is going to be equal to 1, which means that'll be V max. will just be when we have A times omega. And we don't have to worry about, um, we don't have to worry about the negative there because it's asked for vertical speed, which means, uh, you know, it's, it's, we don't care about direction, we don't care about that negative sign. We want the absolute value here. So our maximum speed is just amplitude times omega. And so this is just 
amplitude times 2 pi over t. We just found t. And so the amplitude is 30 meters times 2 times pi over the 8.19 seconds. Of course, we'd want to keep that in our calculator to use, not do that, round it off 8.19 there. And you plug that in, and you, you, you know, you get something. You're going to get something that's, uh, you know, something, something less than 30 there. So, okay. And uh, that's pretty much it for that one. I'll let you do the calculator on that one. But that should be your two answers. All right. So let's take a look at this one here. We have a dragonfly hovering. They tend to bob up and down with a motion that is very good approximation of simple harmonic motion. Suppose that a dragonfly is at x equals a at time t equals zero, and that its bobbing motion has a, an amplitude of a equals 0.4 centimeters and a period of t equals 0.24 seconds. Find a the position, b the velocity, and c the acceleration of the dragonfly at t equals 0.1 seconds. So I'm going to come back over here real quick. I'm going to grab these because these are the same ones we're going to use. So copy, bring that right over here, paste them down, and we will use these. Now for this, they're telling us, they give us the amplitude, the amplitude 0.40 centimeters, not meters. Uh, so to convert that, that would be centimeters is times 10 to the negative 2, so this would be 0.4 times 10 to the negative 2 meters. All right, and then this would be 4 times 10 uh, to the negative 3 meters, just like that. And then they tell us a period is 0.24 seconds. They want us to find the position, the velocity, and the acceleration uh, during that time. So we're just going to essentially plug in t equals 0.1 seconds into all these equations above, which we're given the acceleration, the period, and everything, and since omega equals 2 pi f, which is 2 pi over t, we have a cosine 2 pi over t times little t, negative a, uh, 2 pi over t sine 2 pi over t times little t, and then this last one, negative a 4 pi squared over period squared times the cosine of 2 pi over the period times little t, just like that. So you're essentially just going to plug all of these in there. You have, you know, if you look through this, you have the acceleration you have the period, and you have the time. Plug them all in, and of course you have 2 pi. Plug them in and hit enter in your calculator. All right, so I'm not gonna go through and do that one for you because the video will be long enough as it is, but just go through, plug them into each one of those, and get the, ex get the, you know, get the position, get the velocity, get the acceleration at those specific times. Okay? Uh, next, mass, force, constant, and period. A horizontal spring with a force constant of 11 newton meters per second, so we might need these. I'm going to go ahead and paste them here. Uh, with a force constant, so remember, F equals negative kx, and they're telling us k is 11 newtons per meter. 11 newtons per meter. Uh, is connected on an air track cart, so what we're saying here is we essentially have uh, little to no friction, so friction is negligible. When the cart is set in motion, the spring causes it to oscillate back and forth with a period of 1.2 seconds. So, uh, not, not amplitude, period of 1.2 seconds. What is the mass of the cart? So for this one, we need to worry about what the period is. So remember that in this case, it's going to be you want me to say this again, F equals negative KX is MA equals negative KX, which is A equals uh, negative K over M times X. And then we ultimately find out then that this is omega squared. So omega is the square root of K over M, and then omega is 2 pi F 
square root of k over m, which is 2 pi over t equals the square root of k over m. And so therefore, the period equals uh, 2 pi square root of m over k. So if you don't like doing what I just did to come up with that, you can just, of course, remember that one right there. So period is 2 pi times the square root of mass over that spring constant. So we're supposed to find the mass here from that. And we're given k, right? And look at this. We're given k. We're given the period. So the only thing we don't know is m. So we can solve it just there with that. We didn't even, uh, we didn't actually need these up here, but I went ahead and pasted them just because I had them anyway in case we did. So let's take a look here. Let's solve this for m. So this is t squared equals 4 pi squared m over k. And so this becomes m equals k period squared over 4 pi squared. So it's just a matter of plugging this stuff in. 11 newtons per meter times 1.2 seconds squared over 4 pi squared, just like that. And then that should do it for us. Uh, if you think about this, a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. And then we have 1.2 uh, seconds squared, so we'll get a second squared. And then this whole thing, it's a newton, sorry, here, it's a newton per meter, so the meters will cancel, the second squares will cancel. We will be left with just a kilogram there for checking the units there. Uh, you can go ahead and plug all that stuff in, and you'll get something in kilograms there for you, okay? Next one, a 0.12 kilogram mass attached to a spring oscillates with a maximum amplitude of 0 0.0750 meters and a maximum speed of 0.524 meters per second. Find the force constant and the period of motion. So what they've given us here is mass equals 0.12 kilograms. They've given us amplitude is 0 0.075 meters. And they've given us speed max is 0.524 meters per second. And they've asked us to find the force constant and the period of motion. Okay, so uh, from this, we need to take a look here first. We've got these wonderful equations again, all right? And then we have F, oops, we have F equals negative KX, and we've got period equals 2 pi square root of M over K. So the first thing they ask us to find is the force constant K. Uh, if we look at that, we can't find it from the period equation because we don't have the period. In fact, we're going to need it to find the period in part B. So if you look here, the only thing it's really showing up in is F equals negative KX. So we need to try and work our way to where we can solve it with that. So we know the velocity maximum. Uh, they gave that to us, and they gave us the amplitude, which means we can use that to solve for uh, omega. So we can say uh, we want the force constant and the period of motion. So we can say V max is going to be equal to uh, negative A omega, except we're going to go with speed max, right? Maximum speed, so we don't need that negative sign there, is A times omega. And that gives us omega, oops, sorry, that gives us a equals 2 pi over the period. So, in fact, we can go ahead and solve for the period actually first right here. So we might, we might do this in a, in a slightly reversed order here. So this gives us that the period is equal to uh, A times 2 pi over V max, which we can go ahead and plug in. And so uh, a is 0 0.075 meters times 2 times pi over V max, which is 0 0.524 meters per second. And so then that right there, if you plug that all in, this is a times, not a, not a minus there. If you plug this all in, you should get a nice uh, period amount there. In fact, the meters will cancel with the meters, and you have 1 over a 1 over a second, which is just a second. 
and uh, that then will give you what the period is. So that's actually going to be part B for us. So we get part B there. Uh, from there, we could even take part B, right? And we could go through and use that now for part A. All right, part A, we can use t equals 2 pi square root of m over k. We have the period. We have m. We just need to solve for k. So t squared equals 4 pi squared m over k. So I'm going to make this k equals 4 pi squared times m over t squared. Then you could just go through and plug that stuff in, and you'll get 4 pi squared. Uh, the mass is 0 0.12 kilograms, and the period is whatever this happens to be uh, squared. Whatever, whatever this number is, plug it in right there and make it squared. Type that into your calculator, and uh, then you'd be done. Okay? Let's try another one here. When a 0.42 kilogram mass is attached to a spring, it oscillates with a period of 0 0.350 seconds. If instead a different mass M2 is attached to the same spring, it oscillates with a period of 0.7 seconds. Find A, the force constant of the spring, and B, the mass M2. All right, so let's start here. So. M1 is 0.42 kilograms, and it oscillates with a period of 0.35 seconds, and we'll call that T1. Then we, mat, we put an M2 mass on there, which we don't know, and it has a new period, T2, which we'll call 0.7 seconds, just right there, all right? And so we need to find the force constant and then use that to find the mass, all right? So t, we're going to use this one, t equals 2 pi square root of m over k. So for part a, we have t1 equals 2 pi square root of m1 over k. And now it's going to be the same k because we're not switching the springs. So we square both sides, t1 squared equals 2 pi m1 over k, and then k equals 2 pi m1 over t squared. And so we can plug in those numbers. This is 2, this is pi, this is 0.42 kilograms over t, that's t1, I forgot to put it there, over t1, which is 0.35 seconds squared. And if we go through and we plug that in so we actually get an answer, let's see here. 2 times pi times 0.42 divided by 0.35 squared. Uh, that's 21. So k is going to equal 21.54 uh, newtons per meter. And if you look at that, that's kilograms. Uh, per second squared is what we ended up with there. Remember, a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, and if it's a newton per meter, the meter is canceled, and you're left with kilograms per second squared. So our units match up. And so now it's just a matter of let's plug this in and find the mass for m2. So this is t2 equals 2 pi square root of m2 over k. Square everything again. And uh, do what you need to do, you get m2 equals t2 squared times k over 4 pi squared. And I think on that previous one, I forgot to square the 2 pi. So hold on on that example, hold on on this answer. Um, this should have been squared squared squared. So I need to take that answer and multiply it by 2 pi again by 2 by pi. Sorry about that. 135. 135.36. It's really 355, but newtons per meter. Sorry about that. I forgot to square the square the the pi and the 2 there. All right. And so now that's what m2 is. So we just plug in t2.7 seconds squared. You take the number that's in your calculator, it's 135.355, whatever, 
so on that's in your calculator, newtons per meter divided by 4 and pi squared. So I'll let you plug that in your calculator, but that should, that should give you the mass. All right, and the, the newton per meter is a kilogram per second squared, and then the second squared will cancel with this second squared right there and leave you with just a kilogram so the units work out nicely for you too. Don't forget to always check your units to make sure you didn't have any mistakes in there. Of course, it didn't help me with finding the mistake there for the not forgetting to square the two pi because none of that has a unit because pi is a ratio and two is just a number. Okay, let's take a look at this one. A 0.26 kilogram mass is attached to a vertical spring. All right, so mass equals 0.26 kilograms is attached to a vertical spring. When the mass is put into motion, its period is 1.12 seconds. So period is 1.12 seconds. How much does the mass stretch when the spring uh, is at rest in equilibrium position? So, uh, we have that. What we need to do is try to figure out, is try to figure out uh, what this is. So if we look at this, we have a mass. We're going to put it here, and we need to find when is it in equilibrium. All right, we've got some mass here. It's going to be in equilibrium when the force due to the spring is equal to the force due to gravity. This one is kx. We don't have to worry about the negative because we know it's pointed upward. And then this one is mg. And in fact, uh, we're just looking for when do those two things equal because what we want, Newton's second law, is net force, right? We want that to equal zero in this case. So this means that we would have, if we add up all the forces on it, we have kx pulling up on it and we have mg pulling down on it, that has to equal zero, right? That's the zero this needs to equal to. And so we need kx equals mg. That'll tell us when we are in equilibrium for this one. So if we look at this one, uh, we are trying to find x, right? So if we solve this, we have x equals mg over k. Now we know m, we know g, but we don't know k. So we need to find k first. So if we come back to this thing, t equals 2 pi square root of m over k, we can actually use it to solve for k. So if we do that, we square everything. We get k equals 4 pi squared m over t squared, just like that. All right, so I squared everything. Uh, multiplied k over and divided the t squared over. And so that means that x becomes, our position here becomes 4 pi, oops, sorry, I'm putting that on the top there. This is mg over 4 pi squared m over the period, right there, okay? And so here, we can go ahead and uh, we can kind of reduce this a little bit, simplify it. We can cross out the m's, since the period is taking care of that for us, and we can multiply this period up to the top. So this is gt over 4 pi squared. So a pretty simple result there. Now, this does depend on the mass. It's just that the period um, depends on the mass as well. So the mass dependence isn't gone on this. If you put different masses on there, they are going to stretch different amounts. But we, if you put a different mass on there, we would have a different period, and therefore that's where it would change because it would change the period. And so that, that still is in there. It still has a dependence on mass. It is not independent of mass. So we plug this in. This is 9.8 meters per second squared. We're using a positive 9.8 here because... We already took care of positive negatives up here when we did this net force uh, with the plus and the minus mg there, the plus kx and the minus mg. And so this is that times 1.12 seconds over 4 pi squared, just like that. And that'll give us uh, how much it stretches uh, when it's at rest. So how far did it actually stretch down there? And that would be the answer there. 
So suppose this experiment is repeated on a planet where the acceleration due to gravity is twice what it is here on Earth. By what multiplicative factor do the period and equilibrium of the stretch change? So the period has no dependence on that, so it's not going to change the period at all, but it will change the stretch. You can see right here we have, oops, that was the eraser. I thought I had the highlighter. So we can see right here we have G. And it's just the position or the amount of the stretch is directly proportional to G. And so therefore it's just going to double it, right? If we're, if we're doubling G, we're gonna double that length that it stretches, but that would then be our new equilibrium position. And uh, the period is not gonna matter then at that point. All right, um, I may stop here and start a new video just because this one's getting kind of long. So, all right, I'm going to stop right there and then uh, I think, let's see here, how many do I have left? Yeah, I have like five left. So we'll stop there and I'll make a new video with these five. Okay, thanks for listening.